Oh yeah. You know, I'm doing the mindset are you, thing. Are you massaging your money mindset? <laughs> yes, that's exactly what I'm doing. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Do you ever just sit at home and just, you know, soak in your money mindset? Mm. Telling yourself affirmations and imagining what life is like when you have, you know, complete and total financial freedom. All the time. Yes. All the time. Yes. Me too. Yeah. Um, hey, welcome to the Mastery Podcast. Adam Carroll Nickter. Uh, we're talking today about your money mindset. And this is a really important topic because it is Financial Literacy Month. Mm -hmm. It's April. And so um, I believe that there is nothing that will get you closer to achieving your financial goals than your money mindset. 100%. What do you think? 100% agree. Uh, you know, I tell a lot of my clients and, and people uh, that, you know, there, first of all, there's a wealth of information out there on the internet around how to build wealth, etc. <clears throat> but with what the, the funny thing is, is regardless of how much information there is, people are still dealing with whatever it is that they're dealing with. Totally. Like one out of three Americans can't afford a thousand dollar emergency, et cetera, but there's a wealth of information. So what really is missing is the money mindset. Yep. And so um, once that is created, solidified, and um, part of your routine or how you think about money, then you know the, the sky's the limit. Yeah. So how would you, we've done a show about your relationship to money mm -hmm. and uh, if money were a person, how would you describe that person? Yep. How, what is the difference in your opinion between those kinds of topics? Like, you know, what was your earliest money memory mm -hmm. and how that impacts you versus what your money mindset is? Mm. Well, I think the, uh, so the early money memories, your relationship to money if it's, as if it were a person, I think that is, um, it's kind of the uh, the pre conversation to the money mindset, okay? Um, because it gives access and a glimpse into how people think about money. Mm -hmm. So that is important to distinguish because yep. it then leads to you know what someone's money mindset is. Right. Um, I was talking with a new client yesterday, and you know she's been a W two employee her entire life um, until she started her own company a couple months ago. So the money mindset is now shifting from W two to entrepreneur. Right. And it's completely different because growing up, her early money memories from her parents is go to school, work hard and earn money. Yeah. And the whole conversation now is like, she's putting a lot of hours and not necessarily getting a lot of return right. yet right. is like kind of messing with her mindset. Totally. Um, so I think, uh, the relationship to money and, um, uh, early money memories definitely yep. lead to, uh, exposing what someone's money mindset is. Yep. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. What would you say? Is it? Um, yeah, I would agree. I think there's, um, I think money mindset so much has to do with things like risk and, uh, you know, your ability to, to make money mm -hmm. and that the mindset of like a, a good example is a friend of mine had basically set out this intention that he was going to make a, a significant amount of money in a short period of time. Mm -hmm. And everyone said, Oh, that's crazy. You'll never be able to do that. And he's like, it's all up here. It's all just mindset. Mm -hmm. And so for him, he was willing to take a risk and, it, and you know, for some people it may have looked like a big risk. I think he invested $20,000 in a product, mm. but he knew that he would turn around and sell a hundred thousand or $200,000 worth of product yep. for him. It was just a sort of, I just trade this for this because my mindset is I know it's worth it. Yeah. Mm. And, I, and I think there's something to your money mindset around, um, you know, a good friend of mine said, when you realize that you can make, how easy it is to make $3,000 a month, you'll wonder why you ever went to work for somebody in the first place. Mm. And that is a mindset, yeah. right? Because some people say, well, you've got to have a job to make money. And that is a mindset. Mm -hmm. A lot of times I think sort of uh, put there by university systems and parents and the school Society. districts yeah. and all that stuff, right? Yeah. So anyway, how do we change it? Yeah. So, um, you, well, the first thing that comes to mind really is affirmations. Like, you know, what, what I'm clear about money mindset is, you know, in terms of your friend talking about, you know, if you can generate 3000 a month on your own, then why would you ever work for someone else? It's all the things that he's telling himself, right? So it's all in the languaging and what you're telling yourself. So affirmations are a great way to, uh, disrupt it, uh, or create something new because a mindset really is what you're telling yourself and it colors and shapes what's possible and what's not possible. Yep. So for me, you know, one of the, one of the ones that I've recently taken on, you know, since moving in Des Moines this year is that uh, in affirmation is poor people are uh, poor people are cheap with their money and rich people are cheap with their time. 
Hmm. So for me, the money mindset is looking at how I can um, leverage my time and I'd be willing to spend money to give me more time. Hmm. Um, so affirmations are a good one. You know, uh, another one that was very similar to your friend is uh, uh, every time money goes out, every time I spend money, it comes back to me tenfold. Mm -hmm. So that's another affirmation. I like it. Um, what are some affirmations you have? Uh, the one that I use all the time is money comes easily and frequently. Money comes easily and frequently. Yeah. Yep. And the other one I use a lot, which actually I got from the movie, it may have been The Secret. Um, okay. But it was, I get more checks than bills in the mail. Mm. Nice. You know, yep. and, and so I use that uh, quite regularly now. Okay. And, and interestingly, when I started saying I get more checks than bills in the mail, mm -hmm. um, we were on this path of paying off a lot of the bills that we had. So on a monthly basis, I mean, we might get three or four mm -hmm. bills in the mail. Um, but on a monthly basis, I get several checks because yeah. of the business that I'm in. Right. So whether it's selling books or it's speaking engagements or consulting money that comes in, whatever it is, there's money coming in and it usually comes in five, six, seven times a month. Mm -hmm. So it's become true. I do yeah. get more checks in the mail than bills. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's good. Um, what are some other ones? Uh, one that I have, uh, I, so I have a lot of post-its on my door as I leave, mm -hmm. <clears throat> as I leave my apartment. And um, so, you know, poor people are cheap with their money, rich people are cheap with their time is one of them. Another one is that money is everywhere. And so literally where I look, uh, when I see that, I literally start to look for money. Um, whether that's, you know, speaking engagements, like, like, uh, opportunities that aren't yep. physically there. Yep. Um, I then start to look at things. So if there's a person I can, I can, my mindset will be maybe that person can lead me to a speaking engagement mm. or whatever the case is. Interesting. Um, or if I, you know, money is everywhere, I'll look at the different uh, gas prices and it'll be lower than what it was the day before mm. or something like that, you know? So, uh, money is everywhere is another affirmation that I have. Um, one of the ones that, one of the ones I like, and, and I got this from <clears throat> a friend of mine named Scott Ginsburg, mm. and he said that writing is the basis of all wealth. Mm. And so whenever I'm like, oh, I gotta write, I gotta write something today, it, there are times where you don't feel like writing, mm. but writing is the basis of all wealth kind of puts me in the mode of, I'm gonna write because when I write, generally it creates mm. money in my life too. Yeah. So um, all these are great examples of how to generate the money mindset. One of the things that we are doing is putting together a money mindset course, which will teach you about these things like affirmations and reprogramming early memories, um, redefining or putting new meaning on certain events that have happened in your life. As an example, I meet a lot of people who will say, oh, I would never invest in real estate. My uncle lost his shirt in real estate, or I don't want to deal with toilets and tenants in the middle of the night, right? So they make decisions about what they're going to do or not do based on some programming that they were given. Yep. But there are lots of ways to uh, circumvent those things and find success in an area that someone else in your family or a friend may not have. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna teach you about how to do all that. Um, all the details on the course will be below in the comments on YouTube. And if you are listening on the podcast, check out masteryofmoney.com forward slash courses to find out more about that. Yep. Cool. Awesome stuff. Yeah. So what should we leave them with? So <clears throat> what we want you left with in the challenge is to create a visual display of at least three money affirmations. So whether it's on a post-it, whether you, um, you know, find a picture with a quote, um, whatever the case is, you know, print it out, write it, um, and put it, you know, where you'll actually see it, where it's on your car, your fridge, bathroom, um, you know, before you leave the door, where else could you put it? Uh, your ceiling. Yeah, the ceiling. <laughs> that'd be good. That'd be good. Actually, that was one of those scenes from The Secret that I love. My mentor, Jack Canfield, um, talked about taking a $100 bill and writing $100,000. Mm -hmm. And he put it up on his ceiling and every morning he would look it up and visualize that. That's awesome. Um, so I love that whole idea too of visualizing what it is you want. Yep. Um, the other thing that I would mention as a, as a takeaway or a challenge is to go read the book and then reread and reread and reread it but the book is Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. And um, interestingly, it's called Think and Grow Rich, not Do and Grow Rich or Be and Grow Rich. It was all about thinking and mindset. So yeah. that, that book was instrumental for me in changing my money mindset. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Cool. Tomorrow, uh, we are, um, ooh, tomorrow's a special day. We've got a new sponsor on the show. It's Thrivent Student Resources. 
And so tomorrow's show is all about the state of student debt. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, very interesting stuff. Lots yeah. of uh, uh, facts, numbers, and really eye-opening statistics. Super eye-opening. Yeah. yeah, so stay tuned. Join us uh, tomorrow on the show. Like, subscribe, make comments down below. If you have questions, send us questions at masteryofmoney.com. We'll get them answered here on the show. Thanks for being with us. Peace.